our father, Apostle Joshua Selman. Can we celebrate Jesus better? the Lord. Hallelujah. Please walk up to 30 people and tell them tonight is your night. Make sure you leave your seat. Find someone and prophesy to them tonight is your night. Whether you know them or not, prophesy. I declare unto you Tonight is your night. seasons in a man's life, there will always come a time in your life when one day can be equivalent to 30 years. It doesn't happen every day. The Bible says, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time, the time, the time, the time. Halakbara you are the mighty God. You are the God.
tonight we have come because we know that tonight is our night of encounter. And whatsoever name Adam called them, that was the name thereof. We call tonight a night of signs and wonders. We call tonight a night of revelation. We call tonight a night of awakening. We call tonight a night of miracles, a night of the Holy Spirit. We call tonight a night where all things are possible, a night of restoration, a night of lifting, a night of open doors. We call tonight a night of impartations, where ancient mantles, graces, anointings. Lord, I pray that you will stretch your hands. Stretch your hands, O God, rend the heavens. Let your people know that you are here. You are here, working miracles, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're turning lives around, I worship you, Shalakata Barak. I worship you, I worship you, you're my God, and your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh, Yahweh, you're my King, and your name is Yahweh. Who voted you into power, oh God? And who has what it takes to impeach you? You sit alone in the circles of our lives. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, 
Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome. Lord Jesus, we bless you and we thank you because you are mighty. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yeah. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait our hearts tonight and we declare that Jesus and him alone will be glorified. Light of the world, you step down into darkness when you open my eyes. Let me see. That's our prayer tonight. Is the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Will you open my eyes? Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. Sing it like men and women of faith. You are God from the beginning. You don't have to stand. But I want to speak over someone's life tonight. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. 
Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. For the last time, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. In the name of Jesus. The price for revival. I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to be sharing with you. Is a very deep spiritual truth. The power of the Holy Spirit is strong in this place. And uh, we're going to spend a few more minutes together. And I'm trusting that while the word of God is coming. That he will do something in our lives. That you will not need to tell people that you met him. They will see. When Moses saw the face of God, the rest did not need to see the face of God. They just needed to see his face. And they got the same experience. There is a price for birthing revivals. We talk about revivals every time. Here and there, in our world today, we find men and women who seem to be mightily used by God. Please let God have your attention. What is, is there a secret? Why are some persons so anointed? What is the mystery behind the heavy dimension of God's presence and glory on others? And it looks as though God Oh, certain people, his presence. He must always show up when they call. I want to share with you a deep secret tonight. Why are certain people heavily anointed? Why is it that every time you come into a place where they are, it looks like they have saturated the atmosphere. They move as it were with a cloud. They carry their own atmospheres. What is the secret? Could it be that there is something we do not know? How could a man just step into a building and the atmosphere, there is a shift that no matter how carnal you are, you know that something has happened. What is the secret behind a man's winning the heart of God? What is the secret behind a territory coming under the divine influence of the spirit that God can raise a man and raise men and literally submerge a territory under the influence of his spirit where God consciousness can be institutionalized within a territory. It is true that God is seeking such men. It is true That in every generation there is a cry of the spirit. That God is seeking for men and women. Listen very carefully. That he can use to birth his purposes. And let me tell you. The same way men have needs. I remind you tonight that God also has a need. And blessed be the man. Blessed be the vessel he will find. Worthy enough to meet his needs. Here's how the Bible puts it. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal. Are we together? The Lord knoweth them that are his. He says, and let every man that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Then he says, but in a great house. It now begins to stratify vessels. That there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but of clay and of wood. Are we together? He says some vessels are unto dishonor. Now notice he never said he made them unto dishonor. Mm -mm. They are unto dishonor. And then some vessels are unto honor. And then he gives a condition. He says if a man will purge himself, 
that man will be a vessel unto honor. Listen to the key word now. Meat. The same word that is used for a good wife. Meat for the master's use. That like a woman is called a help meat for a man. A vessel can be a vessel meat for the master's desire. Suitable. We have read the Bible. And we have read about men and women patriarchs who were moved mightily by the spirit of God. And they did all kinds of things in the Bible. From Abraham to Isaac, like we considered, to Jacob, Gideon, Deborah, Mary, Elizabeth, Elijah, even Jesus himself. And then the apostles of the Lamb. The Bible is very vocal about men and women who were mightily used by God. And then in modern history, we also have a compendium of men and women, ordinary from birth. Some of them never had the privilege of formal education, yet something happened between their desires and their destinies, and they became the voice and the face that represented revival. It was said about men like Evan Roberts during the world's revival that just by reading the newspaper of the revival that was happening in another territory, a revival would break up right there. What of great men like William Seymour, the popular one-eyed evangelist, who because he was black and then because of the prevalence of racism, he did not have the time and the fortitude to join the people in their school of the spirit, he would come and stand outside, listening to the people while they were trained in the matters of the kingdom. And God found him worthy. That tonight, God will be able to find a man and a woman that God will say, I want to do business with you in this generation. Let me tell you, happy is the man that God finds. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. There are vessels that are available, but they are not usable. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Revival is true. It is the desire of God that every once and again, a life, a family, an organization, and then by extension, a territory, that they experience such a move of God. Write this down. What is a revival? It's amazing that many times we, we tag programs, revival, revival 2001, revival 1999, three days revival. And I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just guiding us through a thought. And people come and prepare the choir beautifully adorned. They prepare for such revival. And then here comes the man of God, either the host pastor or a guest. And we come and have all kinds of theological exegesis for the three days. And at the end of it, we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and then be with us now and forevermore. And we buy minerals on our way home, smiling, not touched, not changed. And we say the revival of this year is over. Let's start planning for the revival of next year. What is a revival? Our generation has hardly seen a revival. Here and there we have seen pockets of the moves of God. Here and there we have seen strange seasons where it looks as though the hand of God seems to move mightily. But then I'm not sure that many people have truly experienced what a revival is and the full import of what it conveys. Write this down. A revival is a season of spiritual awakening. A revival is a season of spiritual awakening. A revival is a time and a season where God supernaturally reveals dimensions of his glory to a people and a territory. Seasons are portioned where God reveals 
unusual dimensions of his glory to a people and a territory. You may want to add this. Revivals are personal and also territorial. A man can have a personal revival. A man, a territory, a land, a city, a local government, a nation can have a revival. Write this down too. Revivals are seasons of unusual outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Seasons of unusual outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Seasons of unusual outpourings. Where the Holy Spirit is granted unusual access within the context of a territory. Write this down. Revivals are times of supernatural visitations. Supernatural visitations. Where God decides to visit men like he did Sarah. Write this finally. Revivals are times when God is made a priority in the hearts of men. The character of a true revival is that Christ accents the hearts of men so that he comes back to his rightful position of honor and priority. Revivals are times when the flesh territorially is brought under subjection and the spirit of God finds expression in the hearts of men. Listen to me. The purposes of God if bankrupt of a true revival is endangered. That means there is no guarantee that the prophetic desire of God as a portion for a generation will ever come to pass. It depends on many factors, among them revivals. You may want to add this to revivals are times when the prophetic blueprint of the spirit is birthed within a territory. It usually is during times of revivals where when the purposes of God will be birthed. Where people get to know that this is what God wants to do. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in this place. This is the place of surrender. This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you want. It's a very powerful song. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. That's the language of those seeking his manifestation. I'm open. Before you, Lord, do to me what you want. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. That a season can be opened within a territory where even those who do not love God are forced by reason of the corporate passion of a people. Are we together now? Some of, I, you know, sometimes I watch some of our old, our aged parents because of the transition in technology and civilization. They are now forced to use phones without a, um, what they call it now, without a keypad. And you can see an old woman
straining her face to tap. They are forced to join because a move. Are we together now? It's not their intention. You know they don't like it. But that's the only gift you can buy for them. And so you see an old woman wondering, how do I load this recharge card now? What do I, you say, touch here? Say, where? That's how a revival can happen. That someone who has no business with God finds out that there is nothing else to do. If you are not seeking God, there is nothing else to do. You go to the pharmacy, there is a message playing. You run away and go to a beer parlor and see people worshiping and say, what is wrong here? They say, ah, this was bought since. And the people are surrounded and by mistake, they hear themselves just singing a spiritual song and they say, I thought I hate God. What happened? They've heard those songs too much and that's the only song within the territory. Are we together? Yes. Yes, sir. That someone can sit down with a bottle of beer and while he's about to take the last shot, an angel holds the beer and says, who is this? And says, I am come from heaven because there is a season. God has raised you for such and such a time as this. And the person tells you, nobody preached to me. I encountered God. We have heard these things just as stories that do happen. And sometimes our fathers will tell us, once upon a time there was a move of God. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it is a mandate that is upon us corporately to align ourselves until we host the greatest dimension of God that creation has ever seen. And we will not fail God. Yes, we will not. There are determined men and women on earth that are desperate to see the fullness of his glory, the effulgence of all that he is. We owe our generation a debt that we must pay. And tonight I want to show you the secret. There is a price for it. That men and women can be mightily used of God. Anointed supernaturally to do great and mighty things. Do you know that some of you, if you true, revival is not just an occurrence. Revival is a spirit. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit called the spirit of revival. It can come on a man. That means wherever, you know, the character of spirits is that when they find expression in a material body, they begin to live out their characteristics through that material body. Are we together? So if the spirit of theft is upon me, no matter how well behaved I am, I am forced to execute the will of that spirit. And sooner or later, I will pick something to hide it. Even if I don't need it. That's why there are people who steal what they don't need. It's not their fault. They are, their bodies are helpless executors of the will of a spirit. So when the spirit of revival is upon you, you can be seated quietly in a room. And the next thing you see someone just sit down and come to you. And start telling you, sir, look at my life. It's not like I like what I'm doing. You didn't engage him in a conversation. He doesn't even know what is drawing him. And say, sir, do you know every time I sit down and he starts crying. And five minutes becomes two hours. And the person is there shaking and rolling under the anointing. And a roommate comes to tell him food is ready. From food is ready, you find ten people and it's already night. It's the spirit of revival. That you get up in the morning and someone is quickly telling you, help me with um, Vaseline or cream. And he comes in and one conversation leads to another. And before you know it, everybody is under the anointing crying. No bathing again. No eating again. No nothing and time just flies. Because something divine found expression within that territory. Are we together now? There is a price. We live in a generation where the word price is something that we frown at. Let me say this before I begin to. <laughs> Every time we say price, people get angry. Because it, it, it implies that it's something that will cost you. And our generation is a very cost averse, pain averse, risk averse generation. While it is true that... There are many advantages that come with our generation. 
One of the things we have lost is understanding the cost dimension of life. That there is a cost dimension allocated. And that is true even spiritually. Let me tell you something that may be a bit controversial for some of you. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are things in the kingdom that are rewards. If everything in the kingdom is a gift, what then is the need for obedience? Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible is very clear, vocally clear, that there are rewards in this kingdom. Not just reward in heaven. Rewards. He gave unto some five talents, some two and some one. If it was based on his love, he would give all of them five or two or one. But it was based on their several abilities, which was a measure of his trust. And the end of that parable proved that he was right. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are rewards, my brothers and my sisters. Revival comes with a price. And very quickly, so that we'll have time today to pray, and allow the Lord to do the things that he has to do. The first price of revival. Is the price of intimacy. With God. An extension of my teaching yesterday. The first price. Of revival. Is the price of intimacy. There is a price. To knowing God. Are we together? The price of intimacy. A generation for some reason doesn't understand that knowing God comes at a cost. In fact, knowing anything comes at a cost. It took you five, six, seven, some of you ten years to end the degree that you have. Are we together? Ask any married man or any couple or any young persons in a relationship. They will tell you knowing anyone is costly. There is a price. Brothers and sisters, hear me. God loves everybody, but he does not reveal himself to everybody. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. My Bible says the secret things of the Lord. So there are secret things. Only a fool will carry a visitor for the first time to his bedroom. Have you seen that happen? There are some visitors who are well-meaning. They come to your house and you may leave them at the veranda or sometimes even at the gate and then at best, the living room. But there are certain people that your intimacy begins to grow with them. You are even comfortable to take them to your inner chamber and you sit down to discuss matters that you consider very sensitive and crucial. God has a secret place. And the secret things of God are kept in the secret place. And the Bible says the secret things of the Lord is with them that fear him, not them that have given their lives to him. Is with them that fear him. And the Bible says he will show them his covenants. He will make known unto them. The manifestation of God to a man has a price. John 14, 21. Please read with me. John 14, 21. Our media, if you can just help us so that we hurry up. John chapter 14 and then verse 21. It says, He that hath my commandments, listen carefully, and keepeth them. Now you read from there. One to go. Uh huh. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. What will be his reward? And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. Is that in your Bible? So there is a condition. The Bible tells us that Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings. Is it still in your Bible? And then the Bible says that night he attracted a visitation. It was not about the burnt offerings. It was about the fortitude to give so much. Verse 23 of the same scripture reiterates the same thing. John 14, same John 14 verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Listen, and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Take note, not in him. 
with him encounter encounter the price of intimacy brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth it's one thing to know about a man but it's another thing to know that man there are many of you who have known so much about me you've known so much through my teachings but a number of you here probably have seen me for the first time yet imagine how vocal you were about my teachings and everything and you would talk as though I eat lunch with you every day you can know about a man by reading about him but you have to know a man by meeting him remember the bible says ye search the scriptures in them ye think you will find life those scriptures testify of me that means the scriptures themselves are like ushers they should lead you to a person they should not just lead you to an idea the scriptures are a testimony of a real person they should stimulate a hunger within you to want to meet and know that person and the Holy Spirit is the dimension of the Godhead that has been given to the body to represent the presence of Jesus and the Father to us. And that means that our primary assignment is to press to build intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. I found this scripture years ago and it changed my life. I call it the law of encounter. It is the singular spiritual principle that governs encounters. Here's what the Bible says. Read with me. One to read. And ye shall seek me. Read on. And find me. Uh huh. When ye shall search for me with. Let's read it one more time. And ye shall seek me. Uh huh. And find me. When ye shall search for me. Intelligent people, look at that scripture. Please keep it there. That means if I claim to seek him and I never find him, something within me is lying to me. My all is not seeking him. Because the, the condition is that your all must seek him to find him. And for many of you now, it's going to sound strange. Why do you seek God? Why do you find God? The Bible already says we are complete in him. Now, you see, when you listen to the teachings of scripture, the revelation of God is dimensional. Are we together now? When God is speaking as regards salvation and the realities of the life of God, it is true. That by reason of his verdict and the presence of the Holy Spirit who represents the fullness of Christ in us, we are complete in him. But when he's speaking about encounter, especially as regards the knowledge of him, goodness, you seek him all your life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. It was the same Paul who said we are complete in him that says my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. When you don't understand the dimensions of scripture, you will think scriptures um, contradict themselves. No, they don't. It's just that there are different perspectives. And so when you are communicating from an angle or from a thought line, you may use expressions that look like you are negating a prior reality you have established. But that's not true. That's why it takes the Holy Spirit to help you understand scripture. Are we together? And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart and so if joshua selman is seeking the lord and never gets to find him the diagnosis very straight up is that there is something there is a portion of my heart that is not genuinely seeking the lord listen brothers and sisters let me tell you there is an explanation to why so many people seem very distant from god and how many of you know that intimacy has a presence? If you are close to me, there is a presence that you have. People can know this person really knows Joshua Selma. Yesterday while I was on my way going out after ministering, you know, um, a number of you were around and I said, no, don't worry. We'll meet today. We can pray whatever seeds you have to sow. And there was one of my dear ladies 
one of my tiny ladies back then in, in Zaria. And I mean, she didn't even ask whether they were protocol standing. She just ran and jumped and tapped me and shouted, Daddy, and I turned. And I could not but hug her. That's the advantage of intimacy. Are we together now? While I'm telling others, it's, it's, not, it's not favoritism. I have become vulnerable to her by reason of being directly under my spiritual leadership. So two people can be saying, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, arise. And someone can just sit down and say, Lord, I'm here. And here he comes. And now you are angry. Now watch this. <laughs> you are, you are, it's paining you because you are seeing the energy that was dissipated in making that cry. And you are all believers. There is a price. Remember the Bible says no eye had seen. That means revelation in itself cannot take you there. No ear had heard. Neither has it been, uh, how did he put it now? Revealed to the heart of man the things that God has in store. Not for them that pray to him. Not for them that fast. Not for them that go to church. For them that love him. And the Bible says he has revealed that to us even by his spirit. And so there is a price of intimacy. The biggest hindrance to intimacy is the state of our heart. Listen, listen to me, listen to me. It's not the quality of our prayer. Now, I, I don't mean to insult us, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. I'm a student of prayer. Look up. I've heard all kinds of teachings about prayer. Attempting to explain why the prayers of believers can be answered and others are not answered. And of course, there must be a theological foundation. So theologically speaking, is accurate. But pragmatically speaking, let me tell you. I want you to know that God is a real person. Are we together? Now, as a pastor, as a good shepherd, when you are mentoring believers and raising members, it is true that you must give them the scriptural foundation upon which certain thought lines of scripture are based in. Are we together? But I am telling you in experience, it is not the articulateness and the correctness of saying this to say, okay, um, Father, I pray to you, not Jesus. I only pray in the name of Jesus. Theologically speaking, you are correct. But pragmatically speaking, your relationship. The same way your husband is called Mr. ABC. And the wife says, honey, where are you? He doesn't think he's disrespect. Intimacy has afforded her to pass through all of She will not write honey in an envelope. His name is Barista ABC. But the wife calls him. The wife will not tell you to call him honey. She is not the honey of everybody. Is the honey of one woman. Correct? The same name she called him, you will call him and they can jail you for calling him honey. Yet his wife calls and it's the pleasant sound that comes. Look at this. A lot of people have taught theologically when you're casting out demons or this, you say in the name of Jesus, that's not wrong. Satan, I do this and that and Jesus looks at them and says go and they leave. Think of how many theological laws that statement broke. Yet the demons obeyed. How about the shadow of Peter? What confession did they make? You see, let me tell you this. Intimacy can push you beyond just the, the theological framework, which is not antichrist. Don't get me wrong. I hope you understand what I'm teaching you. But that much more than that, I tell you this, there is a level of intimacy you can get to with God that can afford you. Your heart does the speaking. It's not the articulateness of your English. And so you can stand and say, Father, I give you glory. And then miracles are happening. And someone says, but based on my lecture, I thought it's supposed to be, if a believer does not speak, heaven should not move. That's what I was taught. Your pastor didn't lie. Your teacher, your tutor didn't lie. But we're talking relationship here. I thought I was taught that if the people do not have faith, they cannot receive. And here you are seeing a hardened person who is almost insulting you, falling under the anointing. He didn't believe it. He's surprised on the ground and said, what am I doing here? And yet he still fell. How 
do you explain that? See, there are dimensions in the spirit where when the same way you teach somebody in maybe nursery, primary one and two, if someone in primary one and two, you teach the person one minus two, what's going to be the answer? It cannot, and you mark him, and he will go to the next class. But when he graduates, he will meet a subject called number line, and you will now teach him that that it cannot was true for that realm. But now that you have come, one minus two has an answer. Now, you don't because of what you have learned, go and fail somebody in primary one. Whenever a student writes, it cannot. The teacher looks at the level. If it's primary one, you will pass. If it's primary four, you will fail. Are you getting this now? So, there are revelations that suffice for certain dimensions. But there are levels that when you get to, God does not throw away what you have learned. He introduces other dimensions to you. And that's why you can stand and you are singing. And all of a sudden miracles are happening. But remember when you are writing your Bible study outline, you teach that every time there is no speaking, heaven cannot confirm. And you supported it by a scripture. He confirmed the words of his messengers. You are correct. But this is relationship. So there are many dimensions that if we do not know God, we will continue being excessively formal with our Christian experience. Now in the name of Jesus, I am about to pray for the sick. Sickness, you know, that, that is grammar. My brother, look, let me tell you the truth. Intimacy has a language. A man can stand with his wife and while you are a worker in the company, you have to say, sir, there's no money for water, but his wife can stand and look at him. And just in her silence, she has already said, I miss you. I want to spend time with you. You are traveling. You are about to leave me again. Why do you have to go? Do you really need to go? She never opened her mouth. Intimacy was speaking. And the man can look back at her and still reply, you know I love you so much. I have to go because there is a responsibility. That the words are flying above you, yet you cannot see it. You see, brothers and sisters, the goal of Christianity is not just to crime scriptures. The goal of Christianity is not just to become educated spiritually. The goal of our Christian faith is to come into an experiential relationship with a real person. It is that relationship, brothers and sisters, if it is missing, there is no other thing that can cover for it. Not Rema. Not even falling under the anointing can cover the reality of a relationship. Have you been in a meeting where you can see people falling under the anointing? People are being healed, but you almost feel like God is not here. And you are wondering why. Yet miracles are happening. Because a handkerchief can produce miracles, but a handkerchief cannot know God. The price of intimacy. Intimacy demands complete surrender. Intimacy demands passion. That's the word. Passion. Let me tell you an attribute of God that many of you may be embarrassed to know. That God is a jealous God. Say it after me. <laughs> Say it one more time. Now, God's jealousy is not like the one you do. Are we together? Jealousy is not a negative expression. Jealousy is the very attribute in a man that makes you protective of anything. If someone comes now and wants to touch one copper, because you are also a copper, your jealousy towards your fellow copper will make you to go and find out what is going on. So God is a jealous God. And he created the heart of man to be able to host him and him alone. And every time God looks at your heart and does not see himself, his jealousy begins to fight what is there, even if it's what he gave you. Listen carefully. I need you to understand this. Many of you are surprised 
that God can fight something he once gave you. Yes, sir. Not demons. Hmm. If you are with me, say amen. Please, two or three gentlemen, come. Hold on, hold on. No. <laughs> ah, a quiet bomb. Don't do this to me. We're, we're a team. Are we together? They, they honestly think I'm going to... Okay, just, just stand facing me, all of you, this way. Just stand facing me. Now, look at this. No, no. I mean, stand in a line. In a line. Yes. Now, watch this. No, 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 no. It's not an impact. Look at me, please. You people are carnally minded. Repent, repent. I mean, there is an altar here large enough. Repent. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I want to teach you something very powerful. This is the heart of man. Everybody say the heart of man. The way God designed your heart is such that him and his purposes must occupy the first place. Are we together? So every time he looks at you, he should see himself reflect back through you. That is the condition where he has truly become a priority to you. But for many of us, God is in our heart. But he may be somewhere. Can you dress back a little? This is where he is. So it is true that God is in your heart. But tonight, where is he in your heart? God is not just interested in being in your heart alone. His location in your heart matters to him. The price for revival. Listen carefully. Now watch this. He's standing here. And you are saying, Lord, you are in my heart. Are you not satisfied? And he says, but something here took my place. Something here took my place. Something here took my place. Are you seeing that now? And here he is standing. And you are wondering why, although you are born again, you don't seem to see his outstretched arm. When he flashes from heaven, he does not see you. He sees the desire for a job. That's what is at the epicenter. Whatever is in this position is your Lord. Now, whether you admit it or not, it is your Lord. Are we together? So you are standing here. You are born again. Don't forget. You are tongue talking. But just like the tabernacle is here at the outer court. Outer court is still inside the tabernacle. Inner court is still inside the tabernacle. But he was designed to be in the most holy place. Let me show you why many born again believers do not see his power. And they wonder why. Lord, but I love you. You are singing in church. And then another brother has Christ right here. Your results will not be the same, sir. Now watch this. This is what intimacy does. He now begins, okay, let's assume this one is the need for a good job. This one, I don't want to touch them. <laughs> this one is the need for money. Say money. Nigerians, say money. This one is the need for, what was this? Wife. Children. You want children and there's nothing wrong with these things. Remember it is God that is the giver of these things. He gave you but you position them the way you wanted. Now watch this. Every time you say, Lord, I love you. He says, no, not enough. And you say, Lord, what are you saying? Search my heart. He said, I'm already seeing it. Lord, bless me and see. And God says, no, there is something ahead of me. So when you come for a meeting like this, one of the things that happens to you is that you can stand here and with all that is happening, by the time the word of God begins to come, Christ is seeking to find a place. Now watch what happens in a meeting like this. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Are you seeing that now? At the end of that meeting, suddenly you felt like you drew closer to God. Something, at least out of the three, Christ has ascended closer and you suddenly see possibilities that were not in the last meeting now but it's still not enough this is a man of God's spiritual life I'm showing you 
all of a sudden he notices that from that meeting there looks like there is a greater manifestation of signs and wonders but that emptiness he said why why that why why do i still the meeting was powerful the sick were healed but what is what is the thing and god still says my jealousy is still searching for my place then you come for another powerful meeting or you cry in the secret place and he begins to walk in you take your place take your place while others are singing it as a special number for you it's a revelation that is shifting you in the spirit now watch this the higher you rise the harder it is to let him take his place because whatever was taking his place is something you cherish so much and it's not something you will easily give this is Ishmael that's why you easily gave Ishmael but now this is Isaac ah one day you gave Ishmael but Christ is saying son I need to use you the location I must be in your heart for you to birth signs and wonders you have admired every man of God. But there is something standing. Are we together? Abraham! Take now thy son. It was not about death. It was about a transition. Abraham had waited 25 years for the arrival of Isaac. Now Isaac is born. And Isaac subtly took the place of God. And God says, Abraham... To be a father of nations, I must make sure I'm at the epicenter of your heart. And this one thing that represents your future, take it. Mm. Listen, I wish I would tell you I'm lying. I would have just apologized. If it is God you want to do business with, you can never escape this. No matter how you convince yourself. Do you know this is why many believers are afraid of walking with God? They know he will make demands. And truly he will. Your spirit tells you he will call you as you are. But he will never use you as you are. Now watch this. Remember. He loves God. Every other thing you have given God. Except your relationship. Lord, but I love this lady so much. It took me 11 years. You can be praying. And here her text comes. Lord, I have to round up quickly. I love you. You know that I love you. But this lady, um, if I lose this lady, I will run mad. And Lord is, the Lord is saying, you are talking to my jealousy. I see another God speaking. The idea is not to stop you from marrying her. The idea is to keep her in her rightful place. You can come to church and a message is playing and all of a sudden you see someone like that looks like her and you just start smiling at the sister. She doesn't even know why. Say, you are reminding me of someone I so love and the message is almost finishing. Remember you are a man of God or you are a believer. Many of us are ashamed that although you are spiritual, this is a revelation of the state of your heart. It's true. And then one day, something happens. God will ask you, can you give that relationship away? He said, I cast this voice. It can't be God. No. God, you are a good God. You are a good God. Let me remind you in case you have forgotten. You are a good God. You don't take things and give back. I, I, I reject this. And that action is a sign that he has taught something that is Isaac. And then one day, the lady looks at you and says, brother, I love you, but this I think I am not doing again. Say, yeah, but what is what did I do? Is, is, is I can hurry up and go and see your parents. What exactly is the reason why you are angry? You return back. You that comes late for church, you will come late. You will come early by four that day. As soon as they raise a song, even if it's praise and worship, you are kneeling down. It's unnecessary, but because of something that has happened, and finally. You have lost confidence in the one thing that represents the epicenter of your relevance. From my heart to the heavens. 
Jesus. Jesus be the center. Watch this. When that painful transition happens, heaven looks at you and you reflect heaven back and it says you are ready for revival. At that point, listen, listen. Everything you sacrifice for him to get here starts following you. Follow me, guys. That's it. So it was never about him not wanting you to have money. You were, remember, when money was in front and Jesus was here, you will lose money, you will suffer, you will starve yourself from sleep. And right here, because he has gained his rightful place, someone can say, sir, I don't know you, but I had an instruction that I should make you a non-executive board member of my company. Receiving a salary of one million every month. I don't know you. It's an instruction. And yet your prayer was, Lord, give me a job of 200,000. And God says, I'm bigger. All I want is to be at the epicenter of your heart. It is at this level that he suffers no man to do them wrong. These are the them. Not every believer. This is at the level where someone talks about you in secret, yet he's dealt with openly. This is the level where God would rather a generation die than that one man dies because he knows the difficulty in allowing him to become. Listen, I'm showing you your spiritual life. For some of you, it is true that God is in your heart, but he's number 81. He's in your heart. His jealousy will continue fighting everything everything. It was your degree that was in front of him. Now finally the degree is done. And with the confidence you just ran because your uncle promised you that even before service, he must give you a job. So every time they talk of favor, you just laugh at the people and say, ah, so if I had Nigerians favor me that I have an uncle here. Just when you were writing your project, your uncle relocated to America and left the job. And you finish and say, uncle, he says, sorry, it's not me again. I'm not the one there. And he says, so, so what happens to my agenda? And then God tells you, vain, woe is he that puts his strength in a man. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Let me tell you this. You may hate me for telling you this, but you will thank me tomorrow. You will never be featured in the program of God until Christ becomes the epicenter. It's not enough for him to be somewhere in your heart. No. Are we together? Look at me. This is the first price for a genuine revival. That when they look at you, like John, you can say, let me decrease. So whether they call you Apostle Joshua Selman, or brother Joshua Selman because you are already dead you don't say don't insult my pedigree I'm not a brother a man of God it took a long time for me to get to this point you better don't let me curse you you are, you are insulting my pedigree death has happened to you this is the point where if God says give your car you will not even think about it there's no casting anything the devil will not ask you to sow your car you will say Lord where? who am I going to give it to and they see you smiling. They say, where are you going with this car? And you say, with Jesus' joy. The Lord has made demand of it. They say, we know that men of God are idiots. So you too, you have become part of this nonsense. And he said, no, no, no. This is the Lord. And the Lord says, you did this for me. You proved to me that. And you know, God will not tell you to give what they gave you free. He will tell you to give the one you worked for. Because many of us, your greed can accommodate freely. I've received freely. Let me. So he will wait if God tells you to transfer 20,000 and that's it in your heart, you say, oh yes, Lord. So he will wait till your uncle, the promise of two years, just lands 120,000. The Lord will say, can that Isaac go? Hey! Which Isaac? God, wait, wait. I can, I can even give you interest next year when I get a job. Listen. Everybody you admire the grace of God upon his life pass through this season where death began to walk 
gradually in their lives. I can tell you stories and stories in my own life of sacrifices. I'm not talking of money. Your life. The price to host him is death. The price to host him is death. Truly speaking, it's a realm called Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He says, and the life that I live now in the flesh, that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You must get to a point in your life where everything about you is him. Look at this. I stand before the God of all flesh and I tell you this. You've heard me say it a thousand times. I love Jesus more than ministry. There is nothing in my life today on earth that I'm aware of that I cannot give him. Including this mic. Including the ministry. If the Lord tells me this is your last ministration in this life, as I drop this mic, no matter how you cry, I will not pick a mic again. Never. When he came into my life, he did not come as a tenant. He came as the landlord. I'm not giving him accommodation. He has come to his rightful place. The psalmist said, Now arise, O Lord, and come to your resting place. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Listen to the song. Listen to the song. Much less love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Do you believe it? Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Listen to the other part. It says, treasure of my heart and of my soul. It's in my weakness you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. Oh, hallelujah. You're the holder of my future days to come. That's the prayer of surrender. That all my days on earth I will await. It's my passion, my pursuit. The moment that I see you face to face. Not when I finally buy the house and the car. Uh-uh. Nothing in this world can satisfy. For Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Sing, Jesus, you're the cup. You're the cup. Listen. I know many people who have been looking for money for the past 20 years. Till today. There is nothing wrong in wanting financial prosperity. Don't, I'm, not, I'm not one who will teach you to neglect these things. These are matters that pertain unto life and they are important. But not at the expense of your relationship. There are some persons just because they want to buy a car. God has to wait. Lord, I must buy a car. I found out the car is 7 million. I now have 1.2. If I can get two jobs and I can help. And God is saying, just give me your attention. I am bigger than a car. You say, God, you are not in Nigeria. That's why. Sit down there in heaven and be talking nonsense. Why in Nigeria, there's recession. And another person can be so foolish to say, Lord, I know that I need these things. But I love you. What would you have me do? And he says, while they are running, you just stay. And he said, Lord, stay. You know I need to hurry up. And while you are staying, you turn back and see everything you would have gotten waiting for you. And you are wondering. And someone says, but this is unfair. How can a lady be waiting upon God and this successful man comes to marry her? I used to know this lady. Lord, was I not more hardworking? Uh -uh. She has mastered the art of making me her priority. So I can give, listen, when Christ becomes your priority, whatever treasure he has, whether it's in heaven or it's with you, is the same thing. It's his own. So he can freely grant you access. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. 
But in my weakness you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. Let me tell you this. As a student, I was on many scholarships. I never had the privilege to use one for myself. I would get this scholarship and the Lord would ask me, let it go. Lord, what are you doing to me? Can't I have a chance to enjoy my own life too? Can't I? I mean, when you begin to see God isolate you so that when others are going, he's saying, wait, there is something that already should suggest to you that destiny is calling you. Every lady can enter a relationship, but as soon as you are smiling at a guy, God says, well, I say, Lord, don't rob me. I want to marry. No, it's because the child that is coming from you is not a child, it's a nation. And so he's guarding you. Listen to me. There are some of you, even before you got born again, God never gave you a chance to be bad. The day you were almost holding cigarettes, God made sure one elder caught you and beat the living day. Yes. It's not because you were righteous. It's because then there was a level of consecration and he was guarding you so jealously. Do you not see the hand of destiny that has been training you right from birth? Look at it. You applied admission in another city. You got admission in a way that even you, you still don't know how the admission came. Do you not see that he was leading you? Think how you fought a quiet bomb. Even when it came, you said, what can I do? Your uncle said, I'll do something about it. You still came. It's in your weakness, he is merciful. God is walking on you. Do you know my mother told me a little story? Please help those under the anointing. My mother told me a little story that before, do you know, it's a very strange thing. The situation around your life should tell you. You know, I told you my, my grandfather is one of the founding fathers of the denominations around in the north. And my mother said one day, she prayed a prayer and said, Lord, Will my father, she's talking now to God, will my father serve you like that and just die with nobody to continue this in this family? She said, Lord, either use my younger brother or use my son. She thought it was a simple prayer. These are the kinds of prayers that you don't have to pray twice. Any kingdom prayer, God says amen once. When I began to sense the call of God upon my life, I love God so much, I would go to the boys' quarters in the night and just hold a stick and I'm preaching. And the power of God is just strong. I never knew that my mother was hiding somewhere and crying while she watched me. Her prayer was being answered. So, Lord, you've chosen to use my son. <sighs> when the hand of God is upon you, no matter what you do, that hand will remain there following you. You can dodge it. You can pretend it's not there. You can drive God and say, go away. Even if it's marriage, that is a problem. He can allow you to marry. After you are married, say you are married. I'm here now again. Can we continue where your stubbornness stopped me? When you see somebody who is running away, ask Jonah. Ask Jonah. The Bible is full of people who run away from God. This is what he's looking for. Tonight, if you want to host God for real, brothers and sisters, it's not just by jacking up and down. Oh, I'm powerful. You invite me for this meeting and see. If I'm not anointed, you will know that. No. Look at the truckload of many good things. They are good things, but they are ahead of him. He does not take them away from you. He only shifts them. Shifts them. Shifts them shifts them until he stands here. This is what it means to be a living sacrifice. My life is not my own. 
It's to you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you. I know you've been singing it for many years as a special number. But tonight, can you just take it high for me, Mark? Can, can you listen, listen, listen? Can you make it a, a genuine concern? Lord, why would I put something ahead of you? Do I not trust you that much? Is it a car you cannot give me, oh God? I say it, I'm, and, and I don't mean to be boastful, but listen to me. I have never used my money to buy a car for myself. No. Not once. The only car I have bought with my money was a gift for my dear mother. Every time I wanted to buy a car, God said, no, you have served me too much to join the queue in buying a car. Ah. Whatever he did to me, I pray that he will do to you tonight. I've been captured by your love I can't explain. Please give me volume. Mind. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender. This life is not my own. I belong to you. Truly not a special number. I belong to you. Listen. You have not seen prosperity till God finds your heart. This money thing people jump around with. They've not touched 10 naira, 20 naira. We ramble and make all kinds of noise. Listen, let me tell you. And I say this with all humility. Over 70% of the people that sow into my life don't know me. They've never seen me. The chief financial burden bearers in our ministries, I don't know them. I tell you the truth to God and I stand before God myself. You've not seen supplies till he gets your heart. You've not seen favor. What is, I mean, come on now, please. See, if God wants to give you one million next week, the devil will give you 200,000 naira now. Whatever he can do to make God to not look like a priority. And we live in a very arrogant generation. There are many people who believe that men of God don't know anything about money. They don't know anything about increasing. You are just talking because you are enjoying offering. You are, is that true? Hear me. Let God find your heart. That he becomes your priority. My brother, my sister, you will wonder at what your life becomes. You will join the crowd in shock. And say, Lord, so this is what you can do with my life. My dear mother celebrated her birthday yesterday. Was it yesterday? When was it? 24th. And my dad is celebrating his birthday tomorrow. I have been overwhelmed. My mom called me and she was in tears. She said, my son, in her words, me that I am nothing. Just because I gave birth to you. The world was celebrating me. The gifts and the calls. I told her, I said, your assignment was to give birth to me. And you did it. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. It doesn't matter where you came from. What class of degree. Can you carry your life like a trophy? And say, God, without you, how much can this do to me? I am wise enough to invest my life in you. Like a man will invest money in stocks or shares. I carry my life. Lord, my, it's not like my class of degrees, first class. It's not, Lord, I, I bring it to you. And God says, you give it to me. Let me show you what five loaves and two fish can do. When you give to me. Then you will be surprised. That it is that same five loaves that will feed 5,000 people. 
the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong. When God finds your heart, you will find his hands. When God finds your heart, my brother, my sister, let me tell you, you will see dimensions of his grace. Pastors here, men of God, hear me. It's not all about preparing messages. It's not all about just wearing a nice suit or dressing well. It's not all about just nice balloons. I believe in excellence. It's not just about learning English and learning how to speak well. In the final analysis, the real offering is your heart. Everything I give to you tonight, I'm withholding nothing. I'm withholding nothing. Lord, I surrender to you and everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. I prayed a prayer many years ago and I'm even still praying it as I'm standing here that if there is anything, oh God, you will ever give me in this life, if there is any level of honor that you will ever take me to that will make you secondary in my life, may it never come. Ministry, greatness, nonsense. Nonsense. Influence, koinonia, nonsense. Nonsense. It was his presence that brought all this. How can I be so stupid to trade all this for his presence? No. I love, I love. I love your presence. Not ministry. I love, I love. I love your presence. No, not rema and power and miracles. As wonderful as these things are, he must become your priority. I love, I love. Listen, look at me. The mistake that a number of us are making, brothers and sisters, is that we think that it is by just going to listen to a man of God's tape alone. If I can get small Greek here and, and listen to five men of God and equip myself in that conference, by the time I teach and I break down scripture from Revelation, I connect to Ephesians and I tap her when I finish, I mean even them. And you are surprised. You will preach like the man and not have his effect. Because you 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 can you can you can borrow a revelation, but you cannot borrow the secret place. The secret place is a track record that is not created corporately. This Joshua Selman you see standing before you, my brothers and my sisters, is not just the excellency of eloquence or oratory. It's not just the, the revelation of the truth of God's word. I thank God for all of these great things. But when all is said and done, trust me, I love him. I love him with my life. I have stood before kings. I have stood before nobles. I have gone to places. I should never be at this level of life. But I count all of them dung a thousand times for his presence. If all of you, man of God, is seen by everybody, you are in trouble. A major part of your ministry should be behind the veil. I cherish his presence. The reason why you love me today, brothers and sisters, is because of him. The reason why you invited me is because of him. If I leave him, you will not need me again. So for me, he's my life. He's not just an instrument I use to gain relevance in a generation. He really is my life. While you are seated, cry to God in one minute and say, Lord, take your place in my life. Oh, 
take your place. I don't know what happened. Lord, when I was in 100 level, it was not like this. Take your place in my life. All of the tendencies that have enshrined my life. Don't be embarrassed to pray this prayer, my brother, my sister. It's not a call to condemn you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you more. I want to touch you. Not just to be a preacher. I want to hear your voice. I want to call you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. it all belongs to you. Lord, take everything that has taken your place. It all belongs to you. I owe my generation a debt I must pay. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance. We're praying. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, yeah, till I Fill me up, God. Fill